So we're it's gonna. Awkward. <laughs> we're sitting properly. <laughs> better edit all this out too. I'm going to. our top 10 ways of how we survive a long distance relationship. We've been doing this for four years where Dan has worked up north, he works for two weeks on and he's only home for one week. So for example this month he's only home for one week out of the entire month. So this is what we suggest, it doesn't mean that this is what works for everyone but it does work for us. So number one, send pictures. And I don't mean just selfies, I mean day to day where I like to send him pictures of the dogs, of just our house, things like that, just to make him feel like he's still at home. Get to see what I'm missing. Yeah. <laughs> and I send him pictures of dirt roads and bears and all the fun <laughs> stuff I get to do up there. <laughs> and it works, it just makes him feel like he's at home. <laughs> Number two is make an effort for letters and presents. So usually when he goes up north, I like to make, you probably have seen it on Pinterest where you go open when letters or envelopes and I usually just write little letters like open when you're sad, open when you're mad, <laughs> open when you're mad at me, open when you're sick, open things like that and I put in letters and pictures just to make him feel like if he can't get a hold of me he can open these and just feel better and he did that for me last time he went up north and I don't, I think I've opened one letter. That's and good. it goes when you're when I was mad at you. It's usually a handwritten letter, <laughs> then pictures of us, things we've done, trips to Jamaica, yeah. pictures of Inside dogs. Inside jokes, just things to make you laugh. And it just kind of helps when you can't get a hold of each other. Number three is plan fun things when you're together. So usually when Dan comes home, we usually plan one, one or two fun things that he has to look forward to. It just makes his time up north go by faster. Usually it's camping, or more, more recently we planned to float down the channel, mm -hmm. get together with friends, things like that, road trips. Uh, it just gives him something to look forward to, and just something fun. Definitely. But number four is don't plan too many things to do. Because he's only home for one week, if you plan too many things, then it is too much. Like, and it goes by way too fast. Too fast, and it's exhausting, and even I feel like I haven't had much time with him. So don't plan too many things, just enough to have fun. Number five is keep busy. So what works for us when he's gone, I like to keep busy. I do yard work, I take the dogs out, I see friends. I literally try to keep busy to pass the time. And you go to work and go to sleep. I have a routine, <laughs> yeah. Wake up, gym, work, eat, sleep, repeat. Yeah, so keep busy and it passes time for the two weeks that he's gone. Number six is Text and talk. I know it sounds kind of obvious, but usually when you you get busy, you have to make time out of your day to message you, whether it be something stupid like, oh, on my way to the grocery store. At least it kind of keeps communication and just keeps us involved in what each other's doing. And because of that, it's kind of less to catch up on when he comes into town because I literally text him all day long. I try to text as much as possible when I get home. Things like that just to make sure that we are still talking. And even with the time change, I'm going to bed usually when she's just settling in at home. Yeah. So to be able to talk throughout the day, then you don't have to, every single night, be able to get together on the phone and catch up. Yeah. So we usually like to text. We don't call each other so much just because he does go to bed so early compared to when I go to bed, but we do text a lot. Number seven, uh, something that we do is have some kind of virtual date, whether it be Skype, we watch a movie at the same time together or things of that nature. Watch a show at the same time and then we text about it. It kind of seems silly, but... <laughs> Honestly, it works, because later on in life when we talk about a movie, it's like, oh yeah, I remember watching with that with you. Uh, we were hanging out. Oh, wait a minute, we weren't even together. Yeah, I think a few movies actually where I've actually thought that we were together, but we weren't. Yes. <laughs> Number eight is as much as we like to spend time with each other, we also make sure that we make time to see friends when he's back in town. Because if he's just constantly working, coming home to see me for seven days straight, going to work, that's not much of a life. So we usually try to see friends, either we go see, go to a movie together with friends, or we go see them for dinner, or we go to their house. 
or they're involved in the fun thing that we've planned, like camping, we always try to make sure we see some friends. We don't usually get to see all of our friends, but we like to see some of them. We kind of have to rotate them, and that includes family as well. We do like to try to see our family, but can't see them all during one week because then that's planning too much. And revert back to the previous rule, you can't plan too much. Number nine. Number nine. So something we always do is send good night and good morning messages to one another. Usually I'm up first and I'll send like a little paragraph of good morning, hope you have a good day, and at night, same kind of thing. I sometimes, if I sleep in for work, <laughs> or if I'm busy getting ready, I don't usually send my good morning message until like afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I'll send mine around 5 a.m. and I'll get a reply around 10. That's just because I'm so busy. But I always, and I also try to say goodnight as well, but then I you know I go to bed a lot later and I don't want to wake you up, so I try to send one too, but not too late. And number 10 is probably the most, if not the only thing that really makes a long distance relationship or long distance marriage work, and it's trust. Because if you don't trust your significant other, all the previous rules don't even matter. Not rules, but suggestions, because if you don't trust them, this will never work. Because when I'm here at home, he has to trust what I'm doing, and when he's out of town, I have to trust what he's doing. So if there's no trust, it's long distance is not for you. I usually try, like I like to see my friends while he's gone, but at the same time, I don't go out partying. I'm not at that point in my life where I'm out partying and drinking where he needs to question what I'm doing. Not that I have rules where I can't go out, I'm just at a point where I don't need to. <laughs> That's true. Exactly, yeah. And I trust him when he's gone. I don't wonder what he's doing. I mean, he's in a more controlled environment where he works, but I still trust him. And we've been doing this for three to four years. So obviously something's been working. Working out. Yeah. So those are our top 10 ways of surviving a marriage or long distance relationship. Again, it's just what works for us. It doesn't mean it's gonna work for you, but if you need ideas, that's just what we do. If you have any suggestions or comments, please post them down below. Yeah. Edit that. No, that was good! <laughs> no! <laughs>